We live in a world where there are so many fast food restaurants, with McDonald's, Burger King and Subway having thousands of locations around the world and serving menus with almost a hundred items. But In-N-Out, who are a cult icon in the USA, have bucked the trend by having just 15 items on the menu and keeping everything as simple as possible, ignoring every rule in the fast food book. But what is the secret behind their success and how were In-N-Out founded? Here's how it happened. In-N-Out is an American fast food chain known for its simple menu of three burgers, fries, drinks and milkshakes in three flavours. But due to their simplicity and their fresh ingredients, they've become a cult hero in the USA. They also offer a secret menu that's only known by word of mouth, including animal style burgers and fries, protein burgers which have lettuce instead of a bun, and the 4x4 cheeseburger. Continuing with simplicity, they're still a family owned company, refusing to sell to rich families or go public, unlike their competitors Shake Shack. Despite only having a presence in California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Texas, Colorado and Oregon, it's still got a cult following and has remained almost the same as when it first opened its doors 70 odd years ago. The restaurant still adopts the red and white colour scheme and has palm tree motifs printed on the walls in a nod to Schneider's favourite film, It's a Mad 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 World. Their famous Double Double Burger hasn't even risen with inflation. In 1989 it cost around $2.15, which should be $4.40 today give or take. But as of 2021 it only costs $3.85. They keep it cheap because they grind their meat internally and own most of their properties, so they have no rent to pay. Part of the reason for this was that Snyder hated debt, which is one of the reasons why In-N-Out grew so slowly because he'd open a store, save up enough cash and then open another, never buying something he couldn't afford. The restaurant's founding story is very humble. Newlyweds Harry and Esther Snyder launched the burger joint in 1948, around the same time as the McDonald brothers who were setting up in California. Harry was a World War II vet who became a baker after the war, whilst Esther worked in the women's branch of the Navy as a nurse. After they met, the pair started their own In-N-Out restaurant in 1948, based in Baldwin Park just outside of LA. The In-N-Out novelty which was key to its success was its two-way speaker box system, which gave birth to the drive through that we know and love today and helped to attract petrol heads at a time where roads were improving and car ownership was booming. In fact, their first restaurant without a drive through only opened in 1984. Whilst McDonald's were focused on speed, In-N-Out were more concerned with simplicity, a small simple menu, having high operational standards and private ownership to create quality, friendliness and cleanliness. Two years later and they opened their second In-N-Out, but their growth was stifled by the couple's quality control over the experience in the restaurant and the food. Between 1950 and 1976 they'd only opened 18 restaurants growing slowly but surely and gathering a wide fan base. But things changed in 1976 when Harry Snyder passed away from lung cancer. The Snyder's youngest son, Rich, who'd worked in the restaurant his whole life, became president at 24 and continued to grow the business with 93 locations including the expansion outside of California, opening a Vegas restaurant in 1992. He continued to follow in his parents' footsteps as he rejected franchising and didn't want to lose the quality control model that they had in place. However, Rich tragically died in a plane crash in 1993 and the company came under new leadership through Guy, the elder son who'd originally been passed over, who continued to grow the business to 140 stores with over $200 million in revenues. Guy however struggled with drugs, being arrested for public intoxication and had heart attacks, eventually dying of heart failure in 1999 at the age of 48. The controls of the business then reverted to Esther, who was in her 80s, who ran the day-to-day -day operations whilst Guy's daughter, Lindsay, rotated through the different business departments to learn the business model. When Esther then passed away in 2006, Mark Taylor, Lindsay's brother-in-law and long-time executive became president but turned over the role to Lindsay in 2010, when she was in her 20s with $550 million in sales at 251 restaurants. Lindsay Snyder battled through alcohol and drug abuse as well as three divorces and losing numerous family members. 
but has moved into the top seat to lead in and out in its fast food expansion when she took over in 2010. And over the last 10 years, Lindsay has continued to grow the business, expanding into Texas, Oregon and Colorado, but always within a day's drive from a warehouse to keep ingredients fresh. The only product change has been the reintroduction of hot cocoa to the menu, which was first offered at In-N-Out's in the 50s. All that being said, over the last 70 years, not much has changed. They use fresh produce and cook to order, and the consistency is part of their success. Nothing is ever frozen or microwaved, and every In-N-Out is within a day's drive from one of their distribution centers. Its simplicity and common sense goes beyond its menu, as the In-N-Out employees are paid above market rate, with some store managers earning above $100,000 a year, as well as having flexible schedules and paid vacation. In-N-Out definitely bucked the fast food trend of cheap, frozen ingredients, but there's more to their success than meets the eye. Their good wages prevent staff turnover, and they promote from within, paying six-figure salaries. Their love of car culture also helped with their success. Being close to the highways and introducing drive throughs to the world meant that they had hot rods parked up every day of the week. They had just two rules. The first was, the customer is always right, and if the customer makes a mistake, refer back to rule number one. Some of those customers were even secret shoppers, who would make orders a few times a month to make sure the staff were dressed properly, got their order correct, and received the right change. Part of the reason they haven't IPO'd is because they wouldn't be able to maintain quality control. The company was so simple but so unconventional, never franchising, without hierarchy, no shareholders. They even considered a grill position to be a highly skilled job because only store managers would man the grill. In and out were never shy of overpaying or donating to charity, treating their suppliers well and paying full price for high quality ingredients. Despite McDonald's dominance, an In and Out restaurant outsells a McDonald's franchise twice over every year, estimated at $4.5 million turnover, with a profit margin of about 20%. The total company revenue is now above a billion dollars annually, with Lindsay Snyder owning almost all of the business, receiving big chunks of the business on her 25th, 30th and 35th birthdays. in and out is one of the few businesses that hasn't really changed in seven decades. Some might call that boring, and the future will likely look similar to the last 70 years. Even Lindsay Snyder has refused to adopt online ordering for fear that they'll lose their customer service, which is one of the things they do best as their customers are their most important asset. The culture surrounding people, not just their customers but also their employees, is what has kept them successful to this day. So much so that Warren Buffett has even stated he'd love to invest in the business, actually writing to them with that idea but never receiving a response. With some of the managers on six-figure salaries and profit sharing, they're truly simulating ownership mentality. And without investor pressure, in and out have grown in their own way to become a cult icon in one of the most competitive markets in the world. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.